32-bit Linux is obsolete, according to the main people working on the Linux kernel who deal with platform and architecture support. This is wild, uh, at least from my point of view. Last week, the Linux Foundation held Open Source Summit Europe in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, <laughs> because of course they did. And at that, at that conference, there was a wide variety of presentations, uh, including freedom, diversity, and sovereignty, navigating uncertainty, and my personal favorite, let me scroll all the way up to the top here, um, morning yoga. <laughs> So they had a lot of stuff to get through at Open Source Summit Europe. But the one the one presentation, uh, actually there was a couple of weird ones, but the one that really caught my eye was this one by Arnd Bergman. Now Arnd Bergman is the guy when it comes to platform support in, in the Linux kernel. If you look at the, the Linux kernel maintainers file, which literally lists who maintains what modules and portions and specific work within the Linux kernel, Arn Bergman is in there several, several times. Uh, a key to this discussion around things like ARM and ARM64 architectures right he knows the plan i mean heck he's probably making a lot of the plan so when he presents on the future of 32-bit support in linux it's worth looking at because he knows and his first slide his very first slide the, the slide the 21 slide slide deck is published uh his very first slide literally is just all white with black text 32-bit linux is obsolete Whoa! Uh, now, most people, when they hear that, will think, so what? Right? So what? Uh, I use 64-bit Linux anyway. Most of my computers are all 64-bit. In fact, most Linux distributions at this point in time have already abandoned 32-bit builds. Uh, I've, we've talked about this quite a bit over the last couple of years as one major Linux distribution after another completely dropped 32-bit support. In fact, many Linux distributions have dropped 32-bit user land support as well, meaning only 64 Four bit software will run at all, which I think is crazy at this point, but it's happening just the same. And now we're really looking at it as a thing that's going to be the truth across platforms in the Linux kernel going forward. And there are some interesting reasons for that. So, uh, so Arn Bergman presents multiple slides talking about the various types of 32-bit platforms, the fact that it's not just desktop computers, we're talking about embedded systems and server systems, and there's, there's ARM v7, which is 32-bit, and there's, there's multiple different types of 32-bit microcontrollers. So 32-bit so support is really a, a many and varied thing. We're not simply talking about, uh, you know, uh, early Pentium class processors here it's really many and varied across across the map in fact he has several slides on here where he's talking about different types of of processors from a lot of different vendors and and what their kind of their level of support is and whether or not they use 32-bit or 64-bit whether it's CISC or RISC etc 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 and it, it's a lot the real the reality is the Linux kernel supports a ton of platforms. And honestly, I think that's that's quite a cool thing. I think I think the massive number of platform support, the the immense portability of Linux realistically in my opinion has been one of Linux's strength. Because of that, we've had massive success in Linux in embedded spaces, uh mobile phones, tablets, microcontrollers, uh moving between uh power PC and ARM-based processors and across the map. If we hadn't had such a focus on that immense portability between different, you know, big Indian, little Indian, and different levels of bitness, whether we're talking 1632 or 64 bit systems, we would not have the success in Linux that we have today. So when I hear about pulling back 
on total number of platforms being supported and even larger than that, pulling from back from just uh, a few types of businesses to only supporting primarily 64 bit going forward. It, it, it concerns me a little bit um, while yes, uh, most all of my machines are 64 bit and the the actual impact this will have on my my desktops and my laptops is minimal it still raises some red flags um i want to i want to point out a couple of things here as he's talking about it because he gives an actual timeline let me go let me go down here a little bit <laughs> final slide thank you um <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got an end game, as he puts it. The 32-bit end game is that they're looking at removal of multiple portions of 32-bit support in 2027. Um, so two years from now, including high mem and no MMU, basically meaning um, if you want a 32-bit system that is supporting, you know, larger than a certain amount of RAM, which is doable, uh, that's going to be a no-go. Right, that's going to be just zip, zip, gone. Um, they're also looking at um, uh, possibly retaining support for ARM v7, which is 32 bit, uh, at, at least 10 years or more. However, one of the things that's that keeps coming up. Oh yeah, and specifically removal under discussion. So platforms are they're talking about removal of support entirely, and this makes me uh, a little less thrilled. Intel i four eighty six support, which I find fascinating because nearly every single desktop and server class Intel processor that ships today has an embedded four eighty six processor in it. Think about that for a moment. All the, the 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 Intel management engine stuff, the IME, is a 486 class processor that's hidden inside of every CPU. Now it currently runs on Minix. That's what the Intel management engine runs on. But if we're striking 32-bit support and Intel 486 support entirely from Linux, then there's no opportunity for that sometime in the future to be exposed to be able to be used via Linux. And I think that that's, that's a mistake considering Intel 486 CPUs, uh, class CPUs, are among today the most shipped processor platforms currently currently because they're embedded inside of every Intel CPU. So it, striking that really seems to me to be not a great idea. They're also talking about getting rid of ARM v4, ARM v6, um, and uh, uh, a wide variety of ARM boards, uh, KVM support on all 32-bit hosts, and Cortex-M. So uh, a wide variety of 32-bit class uh, devices being, uh, being looked at, tossed out. Now, one of the big things that's coming up relating to this is the Y2038 uh, issue. Now, the 2038 issue, um, let me see, I, I've got a little uh, animated GIF here to show you what's going on here. The, the 2038 issue, in short, is this. The majority of time-related prop functions that are occurring are currently calculated based on Unix epoch time, right? You go back in time to uh, whatever it is, 1970 or whatever, and you 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 calculate epoch time from you calculate the current time from from epoch time, right? The problem is that in 2038 we hit a uh, bit of an overflow here, and this this uh, little animated GIF shows you exactly that as we tick closer to that 2038 specific moment in time i think it's january 19th 2038 boom we hit this overflow and all sorts of chaos breaks loose and the actual time does one of those fancy whoop and loops around and suddenly becomes a gigantic negative number okay so the 2038 issue is a realistic one now a lot of fixes have already gone into the 2038 problem. I mean, it's only 2025, we've got 13 years, um, but there still are a large number of issues left to get resolved. And um, I think the part of the issue is people just don't want to do that work for 32-bit subsystems, including 32-bit libraries, 
um, if those systems are eventually going to be phased out anyway, right? Like, why are we doing all of this work for systems uh, that are that we're trying to phase out anyway? And uh, that's that's 13 years away. By then, we'll really want to phase out 32-bit support. And so that's that's kind of coming up there is the uh, the the uh, Y38 issue. Um, there's also the high mem ro uh, removal problem. Now, um, you can have large amounts of RAM uh, beyond the three point whatever that you can get on 32 bit systems uh, using multiple different strategies. And those are going to be next, right? So there are currently a number of different platforms that support more than four gigs of RAM on a 32 bit system. Um, including uh, uh, some of these I don't even know, uh, the Marvel Armada XP, the Intel LSI uh, AXM, the TI-66AK series, uh, High Silicon, High PO4, there's a, a number of different ones, and there's several that have four gigs of RAM, such as a variety of in-flight entertainment systems, fire alarm systems, digital signage, and Chromebooks. Many Chromebooks have four gigs of RAM, but are in fact 32-bit systems, uh, so they use a little bit of high mem to support that. That support is looking to be ended in Linux in 2027, uh, right? Is that 2027 is what he's talking about? 2027, so two years from now. And then quickly phasing out over the next couple years, 486 support entirely, all 32-bit support entirely, except for possibly ARM v7, simply because ARM v7 is in use so much right now. There's a lot of ARM v7 out there, and so needing to support that is, is kind of high on, high on the list. I'm not 100% certain. Looking at all this, I don't know that I think it's a great idea to already be planning ditching 32-bit support. I'm just going to put that out there. I, I don't know that it's fantastic. Again, one of Linux's strengths is its portability. Removing and dialing back that portability decreases that strength going forward. Uh, now, a reasonable argument could be made that some of these platforms just aren't used all that much. As much as, let's say, uh, uh, the Intel management engine may be in every major desktop class Intel CPU, you don't really have access to it, right? So while there's a 486 and so many computers, you aren't actually able to install Linux on it yourself. It runs Minix and only Intel and whoever they're partnering with has access to it. So why not Why not ditch support? Uh, just the same though, I, I find that to be a fundamentally flawed, flawed mistake. Uh, I, I think that the, the more platforms Linux supports, ultimately the better. And if you've really got a, a situation where the Linux kernel is changing so dramatically, so constantly that platform support that currently functions is regularly breaking. I think that that you have a fundamental engineering problem. You are too radically changing your 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 core kernel that should at this point be very, very stable. And if we've already got a kernel, an open source kernel with support for huge, huge, huge numbers of platforms, where's, where's some of those, where's some of those lists? Um, there we go, support for non-embedded platforms. I mean, there's just so many platforms supported. Why dial it back? I get that many things, uh, maybe they're just not a whole lot of interest, so there's not a lot of new maintainers around to constantly work on them. I understand that. That makes sense to me. However, there is a huge number of modules within the Linux kernel, core ones that people use every day right now and are planned to be supported far into the future that are currently unmaintained and have no maintainer. Hell, the system clock has no maintainer right now in the Linux kernel. So, so it's not really, really an issue that there's maybe not a maintainer for, oh, I don't know, um, the Atari TT and Atari Falcon systems. If we can have Linux functioning on the system, why don't we let it be functioning? And I, I just don't see 
what new benefit we're getting by ditching 32-bit support. Are, is all of a sudden our 64-bit computers going to operate mega faster and more stable because we no longer have 32-bit support? No, 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 it absolutely is not. That is just simply not the case. Um, does it currently cost a huge amount of time for uh, maintainers to be working on 32-bit support? No. No, it really does not. Now, I, I appreciate that perhaps some of the lesser used platforms, such as, let's say, the uh, the more niche 32-bit ARM boards that maybe haven't been in production for a while, maybe those won't get regularly tested uh, on, on upcoming, let's say, server builds or, or upcoming kernel builds. I, I totally appreciate that and understand that. And if someone wants to test it, they, they can step up and will. Um, but to say flat out we're going to remove the support well that just seems like a whole bunch of step backwards that's going from we have this incredibly nerdy awesome thing where we run on all of these different platforms but we're now going to dial it back i think we should be going in the opposite direction i think we should be adding support i think we should be re-adding support for things that we already took support we took a 30 uh 386 support away that's crazy we took away uh, support for, uh, you know, a lot of the old 68K, uh, the, the, the 68020s and 68040s and whatnot, the old Macintoshes and whatnot. That was a mistake. I think we're, we have so many mistakes that we've made with the Linux kernel in terms of architecture support um, that uh, at some point, Linux will no longer have the benefits that it had that got it to a successful state and something else will come along that embraces that multi-architecturaliness, one of the BSDs like NetBSD and whatnot, and it will just leapfrog Linux. That's just what's going to happen. Um, uh, so thank you to the Lunduk Journal subscribers for allowing me to uh, look through this uh, particular presentation. Again, though, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff, including morning yoga. They had great morning yoga in the uh, meeting room vanilla. It was in the vanilla room at the uh, Open Source Summit in Amsterdam. <laughs> Oh, good times. But after they did their yoga, they then talked about how they were going to take 486 support away from us, <coughs> which just seems mean. It seems like you do some yoga in Amsterdam and you're going to be like, yeah, man, we're totally going to we're going to we're going to put everything on toasters. We're going to put Linux on a baked potato because it's awesome. But no, apparently Amsterdam and yoga has the exact opposite effect on these guys. It makes them cranky and want to take fun things away. Uh, but thank you to all the subscribers for making the Linux, uh, the Lunduke Journal. Sorry, we'll slip there. The Lunduke Journal possible. Go to lunduke.com and click on some things. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast.